This is the DJI mic. Why might an iPhone user consider this? Well, one reason is sound quality. Take a listen. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. This is recorded straight into the iPhone up close. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. This is recorded directly into the iPhone about 10 feet away. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. This is recorded using the DJI mic. Now there are several reasons why someone might consider a microphone system like the DJI mic, but as you just heard, for iPhone users, it can mean a big increase in sound quality. If you appreciate videos like this, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe for more. All right, so now let's talk about the DJI mic, a made for iPhone accessory that's super flexible. All right, so we have the DJI mic in hand. We're gonna go ahead and unbox it right now. So inside the box, you're gonna find quite a few items. You're gonna find the charging case, of course, a couple of transmitters, the receiver, lightning and USB-C adapters, and more. So we have our accessory box here. Here is the charging case. We'll get to that in a second. Inside the accessory box, you're gonna find the DJI carrying pouch, and inside you'll find documentation, a couple of windscreens, a USB-C to USB-A cable for charging the charging case, and a camera audio cable. So let's go ahead and unwrap the charging case, which is, in my opinion, the star of the show. We'll talk about that here in a few. On the front, you'll see some battery indicators. You have your hinge and your USB-C port on the back. And here it is next to the iPhone 13 mini, just to give a sense of scale. So when you open up the charging case, you see everything inside, very AirPod-like. This case will recharge your transmitters and the receiver up to 1.8 times for a total usage of about 15 hours of battery life. The cool thing is that when you remove the transmitters and the receiver, then it is paired automatically. So there's no finagling you have to do to get these things paired, it automatically does so. You also have a hot shoe adapter, you have these two adapters for lightning and USB-C connections for connecting to your mobile devices like an iPhone. Now inside the charging case, you see the pogo pins. These are responsible for charging your transmitters and your receiver. So here's one of the transmitters with the built-in microphone on top. You also have your input for a lavalier microphone if you wanna add one of those. But this thing is tiny and it weighs just 30 grams. Its main competitor would be something like the Rode Wireless Go 2, but this thing is even smaller than that. We'll talk about that a little bit later. You can see the linking button and the dedicated record button. You have your USB-C port, your power button, your pogo pins on the bottom for charging, and of course the dedicated microphone and microphone input. You also have your clip and your magnet on the back for attaching to your clothes. And then you have the receiver, which we'll go in depth on here in just a bit. But as you can see, it does have a touchscreen, and that is really one of the cool things that separates that from something like the Rode Wireless Go. So everything fits nice and neat inside the charging case. And like the AirPods, you get that satisfying snap sound when you close the case. So open, close, yeah. Now to be clear, DJI is not the first company to create a wireless microphone system that features a charging case which houses everything that you need. For instance, if you just do a search on Amazon for wireless microphones, you'll find quite a few different options in this similar style. But the DJI mic has the build quality, the connectivity, the ease of use, and that's what we're going to talk about here. So. For instance, when I take the second transmitter out of the box, notice the receiver, it automatically updates right there, links that second transmitter, and it's ready to go. Now, I currently own two wireless microphone systems. I purchased a Rode Wireless Go 2 not too long ago. I also have an older Sennheiser AVX system, and I can quickly tell you that I, I prefer the DJI mic over these two because, well, number one, the DJI mic is smaller, uh, as you can see next to the Rode Wireless Go, which is already a small device. And obviously next to the much older Sennheiser AVX system, it's a smaller device. Now the Rode Wireless Go, I don't wanna make it seem like I'm like disparaging this microphone because it's actually a really good product. And the AVX system, although I no longer really use it, was awesome during its day as well. But besides the size, the problem with those systems is that you had to charge all the various components independently. Whereas with this system, you have a single charging case, you charge that charging case, and then everything goes inside the box and is charged. And when you open the box and take the transmitter and receivers out, you don't have to power on anything. They're automatically on, they're automatically paired, and then you put them back in there and they shut off. And on the receiver side, look, you get a touchscreen interface. You can see your levels, 
Uh, you can initiate a recording, stop recording. You can mute the microphone or unmute. You can use it to format uh, if you want to see how much storage space you have remaining. In other words, you can manage everything directly from the device pretty much, no other apps necessary. That's a big win in my opinion. So you see your levels, you swipe down, you can modify your audio setup. So you have mono here, you can change over to a safety track, or you can change to stereo mode, which gives you a dual channel setup with each transmitter and you can swap left or right just by tapping that button there. Pretty cool. So swipe up to get back to the previous menu. You can adjust receiver gain. You can change the volume of your headphones. And then you can go over for more settings. You can change the vibration notification, which occurs when you start recording and things like that. You have your low cut. You can turn that on or off. Link your device. Change your transmitter gain for each transmitter. Adjust the brightness of the receiver. Change up language, date and time factory reset, et cetera, et cetera. But then you get your levels here. And then when you have both transmitters running, you get levels for both transmitters and indicators when both are recording. So on the transmitter, the green light indicates your power and link status. The red light of course is your record. So if I press the record button, I can toggle recording. So stop and start. And if I double press the power button, it will actually mute the microphone. So let's go ahead and just do a double press here and you'll see the tally light slowly start to flash. Now, the cool thing about these transmitters is that each contains eight gigabytes of onboard memory and you can record directly to the transmitter just by pressing the record button. So the onboard storage gives you a total of 14 hours of recording time. So this magnet will actually work as a clip for your clothes, but it can also be used as a stand as well. If you want to stand up the mic on a desktop surface, pretty awesome and then on top of course you have your microphone and your input for a lavalier if you want to connect a lav mic to this and record using that so this little guy right here is your hot shoe adapter which connects to the receiver which allows the receiver to then connect to a camera sit on top of a camera the problem i have with this guy is probably one of my biggest issues with the dji mic is just insanely hard to remove once you have it installed on the camera. Now, you also get the two adapters which connect to the expansion port on the bottom of the receiver and that slides in just like the hot shoe mount. So you just slide it in like that and put it into place so that the pins come into contact with each other. So there we go, we're ready to connect to our iPhone. But what if you wanna to connect to an Android device or an iPad? Well, you also get a USB-C adapter which connects to the expansion port. So you just slide that in like this, and that allows for a quick and easy connection to an Android device, to a Mac even, to an iPad. And what's cool is that all this is included in the box. You don't need to buy any other extra adapters. So here is the receiver sitting on top of the Canon R5, thanks to that hot shoe mount, and that simply connects to the microphone input using the included camera adapter cable. So now I reinstalled the lightning adapter, and I'm gonna connect to my iPhone. You can see it connected to the iPhone 13 Pro Max and I'm running Filmic Pro. And this will give me wireless audio baked into the recording on Filmic Pro coming directly from the DJI mic transmitters. In Filmic Pro, if you haven't tried it, you owe it to yourself to try it. It's an amazing video app for hobbyists, for serious filmmakers, etc. And you can see you can directly choose your microphone in the Filmic Pro interface. Now, of course, you can also connect to an iPad. You can see I have it connected to Ferrite, recording a podcast using the DJI wireless microphone. So I went out to the forest to test the reception distance. And although I didn't go the full 250 meters that DJI claims this thing's capable of in an open area devoid of interference, I did go fairly far. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? This is Jeff Benjamin. I'm here at Bernheim Forest. We are taking the DJI mic for a test drive. Here's how it sounds. I'm probably 100 feet away from the, the iPhone right now. So this is the DJI mic. As you can see, I'm very far away from the iPhone, but it's still able to pick up my voice. Sorry, the ducks are in the background going nuts. <laughs> um, but this just gives you a good idea of what to expect. Uh, it's extremely cold out here. <laughs> it is freezing out here for sure. <laughs> no doubt. So unfortunately, in that example, I forgot to attach the windscreen. Yeah, rookie mistake, but I was impressed. The 2.4 gigahertz frequency band gave me a rock solid connection, didn't drop out at all. 
Granted, I was in a fairly secluded and open area. So the name of the game with the DJI mic is flexibility. You can attach it to your shirt just like this using the built-in clip. You can reverse it and attach it like this for a little bit more of an inconspicuous look. Uh, obviously, this thing is still noticeable, but it is smaller than some of the competing offerings from ones like Rode. Super popular microphone, but it is a little bit larger than the DJI mic, as you can see here. But both of these mics can accommodate a lav mic, so if you want something a little more traditional looking, you can connect a lavalier just like that. But the DJI mic has another trick up its sleeve, and that is the clip magnet attachment, which allows you to attach to pretty much any reasonably thin article of clothing. Great for those times when the clip just isn't an option. Now the DJI mic can also be connected to a Mac and work as a wireless microphone for your Mac. Once connected, you simply change your Mac's audio input settings to the DJI mic. Now what about when you wanna access the audio files that you've recorded directly to each individual transmitter? Well, it's just a matter of connecting via USB-C to your Mac or to your iPad, going into the Finder or the Files app, and then accessing the 24-bit lossless WAV files that it stores there. Okay, so now let's compare the sound quality of the DJI mic with one very popular microphone, the Rode Wireless Go 2. So this is the Rode Wireless Go 2, and I'm up close and personal to the mic. There are no effects applied. I'm using a windscreen to prevent any explosives. And I have to say, I think it sounds pretty good. What do you guys think? Okay, so this is the DJI mic with the same setup, up close and personal, using a windscreen to prevent any explosives, no effects applied or anything like that, just like on the Wireless Go 2. And I have to say, I think the DJI sounds just a little bit better than the Wireless Go 2. The Wireless Go is by no means a bad sounding microphone. It's actually really, really good um, for its size and the DJI mic is as well. In fact, I think the DJI mic sounds a little bit better in my opinion, but I'd like to hear what you guys think. Let me know down below in the comments. So as you can probably tell, I'm a fan of this microphone. It's not perfect. I really dislike the hot shoe mount and you can't monitor via headphones when connected to your iPhone. There's also no stereo support when connected to an iPhone and that's probably something to do with the lack of a dedicated DJI mic app. But on that same note, the fact that there is no required app download is sort of a good thing in my opinion. It's also not exactly cheap at $329. But for me, those problems I can overlook because of everything else it brings to the table. First of all, it's super flexible. You can use it in so many different ways. And the charging case not only keeps everything charged and ready to go, but it also helps you to keep up with everything as well. Secondly, if you're serious about iPhone videography, this is an easy way to quickly boost your production value. Lastly, it's easy to use, well-built, petite, and has plenty of storage for long recording sessions. But what do you guys think? Do you currently use a wireless microphone for your Mac or your iPhone or for your camera? Let me know down below in the comment section. And also check out our two new videos. One, a walkthrough of my recent desktop setup for 2022 and a new OWC hub that's really changed up my setup for the better. See you guys in the next video. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.